Good afternoon everybody, I am back talking about a book that I've wanted to talk about ever since I read it um, a couple of weeks ago and it is The Surface Breaks by Louise O'Neill. There was a couple of reasons why I wanted to pick this up, um, number one the beautiful cover. Number two, Louise O'Neill, um, she has written a couple of um, young adult books um, but I've never actually read her as an author um, but I was really intrigued to see what her writing style would be like and the sort of um, feminist themes that are present in her books and the biggest reason why is because this is a retelling of The Little Mermaid by Hans Christian Andersen. I don't know if this has ever cropped up on my channel before, um, but if you know me in real life, you'll know that I am a huge mermaid fan. Recently, certainly in like the last year or two, it's become quite cool to like, like mermaids and unicorns and there's always lots of like merchandise for that sort of thing nowadays. But I feel like, like without sounding too like pretentious, it's like, I was there first. It stems from Disney, uh, watching that as a kid, but also um, the 80s film Splash with Daryl Hannah and Tom Hanks that impacted on me a lot and I think that that was pretty much responsible for it as well. So I was really intrigued to see what sort of story this would be a retelling of, if it would be a retelling of the original Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale or if it would have elements of Disney in there as well, elements from loads of different places um, and it is primarily a retelling of the original by Hans Christian Andersen. I do have a version of that here, um, it's not the prettiest book in the world, um, nevertheless I really like it, I like reading it every once in a while because it's so short and easy to read. So the main difference between this and the original is that this is a feminist retelling of um, The Little Mermaid. It does a really good job of establishing the underwater world. You feel like the kingdom is very well described, you know a lot about it, um, the sort of history about it, the, the sort of rules and laws. The closest thing that I would say the underwater kingdom in this book resembles is maybe like England in the 1800s, something like that. It's very much a patriarchal society. Um, women haven't got as much of a voice as they do now. So this book follows the story of Gaia, I feel like is how I'm supposed to pronounce her name. I'm pretty sure it's Gaia. The book is pretty similar to the original. If you know the plot of the original, you're gonna know probably most of the plot in this. So as similar to the original, Gaia is a mermaid under the water who dreams of something more um, and on her 50th birthday she is allowed to go up to the surface. Of course she goes up there, she meets the guy, um, insta-love, um, which I don't actually like um, as a trope used in books but it's very present in the original and it's very present in a lot of fairy tales so I don't sort of blame Louise O'Neill for that. She wants to go up to the surface and meet Oliver again and things spiral from there. What I liked about this is the author really did give the main character a voice, as ironic as that sounds. She does seem very independent and very sort of strong-minded. She definitely had her own distinct personality. She gets given a name, um, which is something that the original didn't do. There's also a bit of backstory. You also have a little bit about her mother and her mother's history as well. There's a lot of different themes in this, um, particularly beauty. This is published by Scholastic and I think this is supposed to be read as YA, so it definitely targets like a younger audience. Um, it's very easy to read. There's a couple of things that I didn't enjoy as much about the book. Um, the first part, of the first half of the book is definitely better than the second half. Um, I don't know, there's something much more interesting about the underwater world. The other thing I didn't like about this book particularly is the male characters. There are a few, there's um, the Sea King, there is a merman called um, Zael who is Gaia's like husband-to-be. There is Oliver, the human that Gaia falls for. And they're all really unlikable. They're all either sexual predators or just unintelligent. They're all really misogynistic and there's just no redeeming qualities with any of them. I really like it when um, there are feminist texts and they write these strong female characters but then I don't like it when they just take away 
the sort of morality of the male characters. They just like make the male characters the bad guys and the female characters the good guys. Um, because life isn't really like that. I would have liked some of the male characters in this to have at least a little bit of moral ambiguity, um, be a bit more grey rather than just like black or white, have like good points and bad points, but in this they just, all the male characters pretty much were just really unlikable and just not very nice to read about. Those are my only real little niggles with the book, I really did enjoy it, I liked the um, modernisations of it. If you are into either fairy tale retellings, um, mermaids, feminist uh, stories then definitely I think you will find something in this book that you will enjoy. I hope you guys enjoyed this review and got something out of it. If you have read the book or if you're wanting to pick up the book then do let me know in the comments below. I would love to know your thoughts if you have read it. As ever guys thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this then do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more from me and I will see you in my next video. Bye!